Welcome to the System Platform 2014 R2 Automatic I.O. Mapping Demonstration. In the 2014 R2 IDE, there are two new views that assist with automatic I.O. mapping. The first is called I.O. Devices. You can get to it from the View menu or Control-Shift-I. And just like the derivation view is focused around templates and instances, and the deployment view is focused around platforms. The IO devices view is focused around DI objects. So here you can see I've got uh, four DI objects, four sweet link objects. Here they are in the derivation view. Up above, I have the objects that have not been assigned I.O. Under the Sweet Link objects, it also shows the various topics. Uh, Sweet Link and OPC objects, the DI objects, uh, haven't changed in 2014 R2. Configuration of those remains the same. Uh, topic and attributes, general tab, nothing's really changed with those. The other new view is the I.O. device mapping view. So this will show how attributes are matched with PLC references. For the first example, I've created some PLC tags that are instances of UDTs. So I've got three different instances of the UDT, HS pump 1, 2, and 3 and each of them have the attributes shown, auto manual, fault running, speed command and feedback, and a start command. In the IDE, I've created a template that matches that PLC UDT. Here's the template with the attributes shown. Notice for the IO extension, for each of these I have the IO extension checked. Notice the syntax that's automatically put in. This bracket IO device bracket is the key to how auto mapping works. So I've created three instances of that template. Notice the warnings on each of those. The warnings indicate that I have not mapped any of my IO yet. So if we go look at it in the IO device mapping view, to assign it to automatically map the I.O., I can grab the instance and drag it to the topic. It shows up. Notice the warning goes away. If I highlight the topic or I highlight the object, the references show up in this I.O. device mapping view. And here's the resulting reference that's automatically created. So next, I can validate by hitting the check mark. This goes out and makes a connection to the PLC. And notice I still haven't deployed it yet. So I can make these checks before deploying a bunch of objects. And in this particular case, these all these references were made correctly. Zero out of the six failed. And they were all green. You can also assign by right clicking, assign to, and you can select your DI object and topic I can also assign I.O. by assigning entire areas to an I.O. device. So notice in the model view over here, I've undeployed this HS pump station one area and I've got the three pumps underneath it. So in the I.O. devices view, I can drag that area down to the topic and it will assign all of the devices. In the I.O. device mapping view, there are also some filtering and sorting options available. Each column has a filter next to it, so I can highlight the filter, and if I want to see just the high service pump one objects, I can do that. I can click on and clear the filter. I can also group by clicking and dragging a column heading up to this area. So I've done it by the object name, so I, now I can 
expand and contract the attributes under each of those object names. And if I want to get rid of that grouping, I can just hit the X. I can also sort by columns just by clicking on the column. So there are different ways to manipulate that view and this comes in really handy when you get a lot of objects in a large galaxy. You'll have many objects showing up in the IO device mapping view under various topics. Here in the IDE I've created a containment model to match my PLC UDT containment. I've got my HS pump that contains an effluent valve and a runtime. So here's the template for the effluent valve. I have three attributes with the default IO extensions. Got the IO device in brackets. Here's the runtime. Again, the attributes match the tags on the UDT and the PLC, and they're set for the default IO device. So let's see how this automatically maps. In my model view, I have them contained in this HS pump station one area. So I'm just going to drag the whole area down to assign all of the attributes in that area. So here's the list. Notice the containment names. I'll go ahead and validate. and all of them validate correctly with no modifications. What happens if some of the IO extensions on our objects don't match perfectly to UDTs in the PLC? Let's take an example of that. Let's use this HS pump one. Let's go ahead and assign it to this topic. Notice these two override columns. So let's override this fault. Let's say that it comes from a different PLC than what the rest of the attributes come from. So I can type an override in here, and I'm going to give this one of the other DI objects that I have. So notice how it's already changed my resulting reference. I'm also going to override the attribute. Now I can validate this to check and make sure that the attributes still work and sure enough it comes up green so I've got it referenced correctly in this other PLC. Now I need to apply those attributes so that they're saved. I've got some pending overrides. This is the apply pending overrides button. So I check that and now that change has been made on my object. So if I open up this HS pump one object and we'll take a look at the fault attribute. Notice that the reference has been changed to the overridden value in the IO device mapping view. What if I want to return those back to the default mapping? I remove them. It's automatically re uh, replaced by the auto mapping. Validate it just to make sure. And then I can apply those pending changes. Now the object's ready to deploy. Another way to prevent I.O. mapping if there's a particular attribute that you don't want automatically mapped is to hard code it just like what we've done in past versions. So here I have the HS Pump 1 unassigned in the I.O. mapping view. I've got it opened up for editing. I'm on the fault attribute and in the I.O. extension notice how the I.O. device references there. This means it will get auto mapped. So I can highlight that and replace it with a hard-coded mapping. So I'll go ahead and enter my DI object and scan group. Save and close. I get the warning that I have extensions that haven't been mapped, but I want to go ahead and save it. Click and drag to assign it to this particular topic. Notice now when I highlight my fault attribute doesn't show up in the list because I have not uh, configured it to be auto mapped. So I can still validate these and these will validate fine. But because I've hard coded the reference in the fault, it won't show up in the IO mapping.
Once I've deployed the HS Pump One object and look at it in Object Viewer, I've got each of the attributes shown along with their input source reference. Notice how all the quality and status are good and okay. And here's the reference for one of them that was auto mapped. And here's the one that I've hard coded. If I wanted to return this hard coded reference back to being mapped automatically, I could open it up for editing. And there's this lightning bolt button on the IO reference. So I've got the fault attribute highlighted. I've got my IO extension shown with the IO reference. If I hit the lightning bolt, notice how the font changes. It changes it back to being auto mapped. That's the, the auto map uh, syntax. So I can save and close. Notice my deployment, deploy changes icon appears. And if I refresh it in the IO device mapping view, my fault shows back up because now it's set to be automatically mapped. So what, what happens if these aren't assigned properly? Here is an example where I've taken one of the HS pumps and I've dragged it and uh, maybe I made a mistake. I dragged it to the wrong DI object where those UDTs don't exist in that PLC, but I've dragged it there. I've sh they're showing in my IO mapping list. If I hit the validate, notice that they come up in pink and six out of six references failed to validate. So at this point I can go either override or assign them to the correct one. And once they're assigned correctly, they validate properly. So what happens if there's a lot of overrides that I need to make on a bunch of objects? Well, there's a little more convenient way to type those in. I'm going to assign these 10 objects to this DI object. And here's, here they are in the list. I can select all these columns, and I'm going to use Control-A, kind of standard Windows copy and paste commands, Control-C to copy them to the clipboard. And I'll come over to Excel and Control-V to paste them in, and there are my columns. So I can go in and edit the scan group override column and the attribute override column. So I'm going to give these an override. And I can use the incrementing, auto-incrementing features of Excel. Then I'm going to copy just that column back into the IDE. Go ahead and validate them to make sure I typed them in correctly. And the PLC values are false, but they're green, which means they were uh, they validated correctly. So then I can accept and apply those those overrides. So that's a convenient way to make bulk changes. When editing overrides, you can also undo the most recent overrides or all the overrides. So here's an example. I'm going to modify this override. So if I want to undo the last one, this is the one, the button with the one on it will undo the, the most recent. If I want to undo all of them, this one will discard all of the pending changes. So what if I'm using scripted auto binding? Maybe I've migrated a Galaxy from a previous version where I was using the base template library, or I've written my own auto binding scripts. Here's an example of a template with an auto binding script for one of the attributes. I've got two attributes with IO extensions. One is the PV1, the other is STAT1. So on PV1, if I'm going to script it, script use an auto binding script, I go ahead and I put in the three dashes. Notice how I leave the STAT1 with the IO device reference. I create an instance of this template. And if I assign it to this particular DI object, notice how only 
the one without the three dash reference shows up in my IO device mapping. So I can check this to make sure it validates. And that validates correctly. And then if I deploy it, and let's take a look at it in Object Viewer to see how both attributes look. There's the scripted binding reference, and here's the reference using the IO mapping view. So you can use auto bind scripts in conjunction with the new IO mapping features.